Paradise Killer. Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, a sun that never stops setting, and a moon that never rises. And it is time for episode 47 of my Let's Play of Paradise Killer. And in today's episode, we're going to be starting the trial, but before we do that, like so many uh, underdog newbie lawyers in so many TV shows, we're going to take a quick seat here on the, court the courthouse steps, looking out across our beautiful, if highly corrupt, city, and go over our notes and documents and assemble our thoughts and theories. So... Most of this episode is going to be me going over this. Well, hopefully only the first few minutes, actually. I've planned my notes pretty carefully. Uh, and then we'll head into the trial. And I don't know how the trial will work. I have not a clue what kind of mechanics it will involve, which means that I this might end up being a bumper episode. It might go as long as half an hour or even longer. Or I might find a convenient place in the trial to stop, depending on how long this takes and how long the trial seems to go. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Um, I've decided to mostly, at least at the start, only think about what the game considers evidence. I've made a lot of conjecture based on things people have said, but I think for mechanical purposes, I'll be a lot better off only going by what the game seems to consider evidence, which is only what the game has recorded. Which is a little frustrating, because I had some theories that I'm sure had evidence, which I now cannot find. <laughs> So, um, let's start out by listing the crimes that we're trying to investigate and, I guess, get convictions for. First off, we have the Crime to End All Crimes, or TCTEAC, or Tic Tac, if you like, which is, of course, specifically and only the actual physical act of murdering the Council of the Island. We've also got one crime for each of the seals being transgressed. We've also got the uh, disappearance and murder of K-Hax, We've also got the murder of Grace Bloodlines many years ago. And we've also got a couple of things that may or may not be crimes. The mystery of the, the demon landmine, the questions about Henry's escape, and of course, Henry's original demonic possession 10 years ago. So with that established, I'm gonna take a quick overview of each suspect and uh, what I think about them so far. Aikira's motives make sense. All of them seem to come from the same place. She cares about her men a little too much. Um, she wants a better deal for them, or possibly to be allowed to date them without any particular uh, conflict of interest or, or questions about the power differential with, with you know, the commander fraternizing with her troops. Um, makes sense. She's definitely an accomplice. I don't think she can be directly tied to... Uh, any of the crimes except for the transgression of the first seal, which makes sense because the transgression of the first seal involved swapping out two uh, of her martial guards for two uh, citizens who were then murdered, which means, you know, it ties with her motive. She wants to protect her, her men, so of course she could be involved for that reason. She definitely uh, abducted those citizens from the jail, kept them in a place, killed them, swapped them in the uniforms, etc. However, she was also definitely deeply involved with Henry's escape, for several reasons that I'll go over when we go over Henry a bit later on. However, many years ago, during the murder of Grace Bloodlines, she seems to have been distinctly involved. She knowingly left Henry and Grace in the same room at the same time. It was Grace's job to exorcise Henry, but she claims it was to check on Carmelina, and uh, Carmelina probably did the murder. I'm a little bit unclear about the physical logic of that, because she claims she, she left with Carmelina, but Carmelina was definitely also present in the room uh, during, during the murder, and of course there is uh, an impression of a wedding ring, and we knew Carmelina wore one at the time, and the Henry division did not. Of course there's also the fact that um, when he originally killed his mother, he burnt symbols into her skin just as a passive side effect of having a demon in him, and all subsequent instances of demonic symbols have been carved in with a knife, which seems to imply that the only murder he ever did was of his mother while possessed by a demon. So is that even really murder? This uh, legislature says yes, I personally disagree. But anyway, so that's Aikiko. We'll jump to Crimson Acid next, because basically there's nothing going on with her. 
Um, there's little evidence tying to her to anything whatsoever aside from her vague motives. However, she admits to having uh, manipulated k to gain access to the key to the second seal on behalf of Witness, um, to whom she provided that key. That's the only thing that connects her to this at all. Doom Jazz, similarly, doesn't seem to have been particularly connected to anything. Um, I thought for a long time that there was something about him having falsified or destroyed evidence, but I now can't find any note in here whatsoever to do with any of that, so maybe I misconstrued something. Um, or the game presented me with evidence that looked very clear, but was in fact not clear at all, and uh, was supposed to mean something different than uh, the intuitive leap I had about it. However, he is likely linked to the provision of blood which was used to bypass the third seal. Um, unlike unlike Crimson Acid directly manipulating K-Hax to obtain the key, however, his connection to that is tenuous at best. His his clinic has been broken into. Occam's Razor suggests that it was stolen from his from his blood records, uh, rather than that he provided it and then faked a break in to cover it up. We are going to have to get a little bit Sweeney Todd with the Occam's Razor up in here today, because there is a whole lot of um, conjecture that you can layer upon itself, uh, which is frustrating because we do have to make a lot of conjecture, which we'll get to. So. Crimson Acid and Doom Jazz may have been convenient idiots for the purposes of other people. Next up, we're going to go to Lydia and Sam Daybreak, who oddly are treated as a single unit by the game, but not by the people in the world. Um, I can't tell if this is some kind of game design limitation, they didn't want to have to deal with more characters, even, uh, or if this is some kind of idea about the cosmic truth of true love between the two of them that they are bonded together so closely that they are you may as well consider them one person for these purposes which is interesting because i had a thought which is what if they had different views you know it's not unreasonable to think that these two individuals being treated as a single individual might have some kind of uh not even a disagreement but simply thinking different things about the same thing while assuming that the other thinks something different it's, it's not inconsistent, for example, you know, Sam says they're happy and they didn't have a problem with the council, Lydia says they are unhappy and they do have a problem with, the problem with the council. It's entirely possible for them to have been talking past each other or misunderstood each other, or thought that, you know, vague discomforts were simply vague discomforts rather than evidence of some kind of deep desire to flip the table and move on. Right, let's go to Witness now, because uh, kind of the order in which I did this didn't make sense, but whatever, you know. So, Witness. With Witness, what we know is that he definitely put a demon in a box, and later that box seems to have been somehow transported to the council chambers and detonated, and he definitely sent a wireless message to that crate in order to in order to release it. So it seems very very directly that he is responsible for the deaths of at least some council members. He put a demon in a box. He opened that box uh, from a safe distance while the council was standing next to it, and the council were murdered by- some of the council at least were murdered by demons. Or a demon. So Yuri is interesting because he has very inconsistent motives. He has a, he has a lot of different people saying a lot of different things about why he might do things. Um, Sam thinks it's to do with violent urges, weirdly. Um, a couple of people- there's a couple of pieces of evidence with regards to him possibly having been uh, God deceived, which means that he is no longer trustworthy because he's essentially possessed by a god rather than a demon, sort of, to some extent. Um, and there's also evidence, and so if that's the case, then it would make sense that he wants to retrieve her from the real world. After all, that's what the uh, the islands are supposed to be for, it's what the syndicate are supposed to be for, and obviously if he's been subverted by a god, that god's going to want to use him to further that goal. However, it does also make sense, he's a very tangled up little boy of a man, and he very desperately wants respect, but he can't seem to get it anywhere. So it makes sense that he would be desperate to get on the council, and hey, you know what? Uh, eight positions just opened up by means of um, eight wounds opening up. So that's, you know, there's there's a couple of different motives which are, which are quite different, but I guess both of which would be served by the same goal. He's pretty much the only suspect in Henry's possession since He's the only person in a position to have provided uh, an illegal demonology grimoire to Henry, 
and uh, Henry definitely had that grimoire that he should not have had, and that's how this whole uh, cavalcade of failure got going. He's also placed at the scene and near the scene due to petals falling off his hat, which is pretty tenuous evidence, but it does fit into a larger picture. And of course, he's Carmelina's assistant, which is going to be very relevant in a moment. It's also, he's also the only direct suspect we have for the murder of Kayhax since in Kayhax's dead, dead fist was clutched Yuri's ring. That seems like a pretty damning piece of evidence and of course he shut the boat rides down so that people wouldn't see the corpse although that seems like a strange thing to do because why would you not simply bury the corpse cover the corpse put the corpse somewhere else burn the corpse there's a there's a number of things you can do to corpses other than simply leaving them where they are and then banning people from walking in the region on the other hand maybe he was improvising it's un clear exactly how long k Hax has been missing so um these these eventualities might have come to a head very very quickly wow time is zipping past this is probably just going to be an evidence review which means next episode will be the, <laughs> will be the actual uh trial so who else we got we got witness what's witness's deal um well his motive is pretty clear. He's a priest of the gods. He thinks that we're not doing enough work to rescue the gods and restore them to their, their, their might and power and divine majesty. We know that he created the demon bomb and we know that he triggered it. There's Again, there's very little direct evidence tying him to things. However, there's a ton of circumstantial evidence that puts him as a spider at the center of a web. Though we do know that he took some flesh from Crying Grudge, which pretty solidly ties him to the attempts to transgress the fourth seal. So similarly, Carmelina, she's got motive. She is banned from being on the council, but she's a very important person and who's very proud of her work. It makes sense to me that she would she would want a seat on the council and have, you know, been denied it. She clearly, in fact, we know for sure that she attempted to get a seat on the council. So it stands to reason that she might uh, try to overturn the regime especially considering she was made the de facto um, stand-in leader during this crisis. So if that was her plan, it seems to have been working out for her pretty well. Again, like Witness, there's like there's not very much hard evidence tying her to any of the crimes. However, we do know that she can create secret magic corridors, something that apparently no one else can do and nobody suspected anyone could do. We also know that there's a period of time in which her movements are unaccounted for. So. It's very likely that she did certain things that we will talk about briefly in a moment. And of course, she's the other person who took some god flesh, which again, that's the final seal, the most difficult seal to transgress. So um, yeah, she's definitely, she's definitely a, an additional spider at the center of the same or a different web. That leaves a couple of others. We've got one last kiss who is a ghost and therefore has no evidence for or against her in any way because she's a ghost. Uh, as far as I can tell, her motive is to have her own murder solved, which, I mean, it seems pretty clear at this point that Carmelina strangled her when she was alive because she was Grace Division, uh, Grace Bloodlines. And uh, getting Grace Bloodlines out of the way was necessary for all of the rest of these plots to, to progress. Because, well, actually, now that I think about it, this isn't something I thought in my notes, but um, actually, Grace Bloodlines only stood in the way of Witness's plot, because Witness's plot involved a demon, and Grace is the demon exorciser. -er. Although, both plots possibly track back to a prior state with Henry Division, and Henry Division's exorcism was the, was the location of Grace's murder, so actually, no, scratch that. Um, both their plots directly, directly track back to Henry Division uh, in a way that is kind of confusing and we'll talk about a little bit in a little bit. Finally, that leaves Henry himself, the poor sweet innocent boy. His motive is pretty much just, I don't remember anything, I guess demons are weird, also eat the rich, which is understandable given as he is the second most shat upon individual in this entire society. Uh, the first most shat upon person is of course a secret tool who'll help us later. He's a pretty obvious fall guy. None of the evidence against him adds up, except for the fact that he can reasonably be said to trans, uh, transgress every one of the seals. 
Um, there's no reason to think that his demon can uh, overcome its inhibitors. There's no reason to think that he would carve symbols into his victims rather than them simply being burnt by the pressure of the demon inside him, which is what happened the one time we know he killed somebody. He's got the wrong knife to have killed the guards. There was a blood canister that accounts for the blood in his stomach. It's ridiculous that he could have overcome a skilled trained demon fighting specialist like Aikiko 14 and wrest her blade away from her and run off with it like a like a precocious child. But all of that aside, he does have the capacity to have breached all the seals. Uh, you know, the guards are just guards, they could be killed and were killed. The second seal can be transgressed by a demon, and he does have a demon in him. The third seal can be transgressed by someone with council blood, and we do have reason to believe that his father was a member of the council. And of course, the fourth seal can be tra transgressed by god blood, uh, god flesh rather, because the gods are the only people that can get through it. But one last kiss, the former Grace Bloodlines, the uh, municipal demonologist, told us that, well, gods and demons are kind of the same thing, so maybe a demon could simply walk through the seal like a god could. Right, all of that out of the way, I've got a rough timeline of what I think happened. So, 27 years ago, Ice Kiwami, a member of the council, fathers Henry. 25 years ago, Carmelina has a secret baby with Ice Kiwami, and I guess puts him in a concrete box, we'll come back to him. At some point, Yuri obtains demonology books, one tome specifically, and uh, provides it to Henry, who plays around with demonology. About 10 years ago, he becomes possessed by a demon and kills his mother. He is convicted of this, and he's also convicted of killing Grace bloodlines, because Grace was assigned to do his exorcism as the, de the island's demonologist, and... Um, I think that it was in fact Carmelina who did that due to the ring impression on the neck of Grace Bloodlines and the fact that they felt it was necessary to hide or destroy the autopsy report that stated that. So definitely Carmilla did that murder and uh, Grand Marshal Akiko was complicit. Also at around that time, Witness starts doing demon research in his secret lab. Nine years ago, Witness and Carmelina break up. Two days ago, Lydia, and probably also Sam, used the car and repelling gear to bypass the first uh, Divine Seal. They use the remote and some helmets to bypass the second. They use Kafka Memory's blood and uh, Sam's stolen god flesh to bypass Seals 3 and 4. They take with them the box with a demon in it and they emplace it in the council chamber. One day ago, the council entered the penthouse. Presumably they see nothing amiss. After all, the demon box was disguised as one of the ordinary big treasure chests that they have in there, presumably just for vibes, you know, it's aesthetic. Then, last night, Danai Ongate, which is the secret baby that has spent 25 years growing up in a concrete box with nothing to do but play with knives, which is not an ideal way to raise a child. I don't know if you know this, but... Um, you know, a lot of parenting manuals do recommend that you don't let your children play with knives and you do let them play outside sometimes. Anyway, he in some way is brought to the lobby, likely via the secret extra-dimensional passageways that Carmelina can create. He's released, he goes through the four seals and into the penthouse he starts killing some of the council. At around that same time, Witness activates the demon box. The demon bursts out of the box and also starts killing council members. Dainonigate and the demon are both shot by Montserrat, who dies of his wounds, presumably during this split-second horrible whirlwind of blood and knives and death. But Dainonigate survives, crawls out, and manages to slam his own tunnel into the wall using his inherited architecture powers from Carmelina. Uh, crawls back through that, makes it back to his horrible concrete box to die alone and miserable. Simultaneously, Aikiko brings Henry through the barracks, uh, gives him a, a knife, um, swaps out the corpses for, well, provides the uh, citizens in costumes to murder in place of her own men, uh, and then says, oh hey, look, you did these terrible things, and claims to have apprehended poor Henry. And that brings us pretty much to where we where we're brought in. I don't need to I don't need to go over the 
last couple of elements on this on this timeline. That's just background to you getting, you know, you, by which I mean me, by which I mean a lady loved eyes being brought in to solve this problem. So that raises a lot of questions. Questions such as who is actually in on this conspiracy? Questions such as why were there two separate murder plots going on at the same time to kill the same people which triggered at the same moment? Dinona Gatte mentions a woman and a man, uh, which I assumed meant Carmelina and Witness, since they're both tied to both of these plots in various different ways. But what if the man mentioned was Yuri? He is Carmelina's assistant, and he is placed at various different important scenes of the crime, and, of course, he gave Henry the demonic books in the first place many, many years ago. Was he in on this all along? Is that why he uh, killed k -Hax? Does that relate to uh, gaining elements to bypass all of this stuff? So maybe this really was two colliding plots. What if, what if Yuri was Carmelina's agent in progressing this plot and the Daybreaks were Witnesses' agents in progressing this plot and they both just continued on orbiting around each other without ever bumping into each other? much like my uh, delightful satellite home upon which I dwell. So another question raised is, Akiko swapped out um, citizens to be fake marshals. What happened to the real marshals? Where are they? Because they seem like they would be very important witnesses to what's going on. And based on her motives, it's unlikely that they would be dead. It's unlikely that she would allow that unless she could prevent it. However, it is of course possible that every single part of her involvement in this is due to massive, massive stupidity rather than actual intentional malice or culpability. In addition, I have a real doozy of a question that is kind of a massive plot hole with this game overall, which is that uh, we, the third seal is a bloodlock. Bloodlocks are all over the island. We're constantly told they are, they are inviolable. Anything we learn from them must be true because they cannot be transgressed. However, what we learned about the third seal is it's actually pretty easy to bypass a bloodlock. It's pretty easy to trick them or transgress them or whatever. That doesn't just cause problems for the third one. That means that every single bloodlock on all of the uh, all all of the bloodlocks on the island, and therefore a lot of our evidence, is suspect. Because if someone can access one of these computers, we know they can change things on these computers as well. So, really, we can't trust like two thirds of the evidence we have. But the game hasn't brought that up, and it doesn't seem to consider it an issue, so I am going to assume that's just a plot hole. Another one that really bakes my noodle is there's two missing helmets in the council chamber. Those presumably are the helmets used by Lydia and by Yuri uh, to transgress seals while they set all this nonsense up in the first place. If that's the case, how and when were those helmets stolen? We found both the helmets and we found two missing hel two we found a rack missing two helmets. But how did someone get in there to get them in the first place? Because you can't get through the seals without a helmet. It's like trying to unlock a box with the crowbar that's inside the box. It doesn't make sense. Uh, finally, I do have another question, which is did Carmelina and Witness fall out over their different approaches, or did they separately decide to make their separate murder plots uh, and do the tic tac? afterwards. There's evidence for both sides, but the fact that Henry Division seems to be to some extent connected to this whole thing in a way that I don't think is completely separate from Witness. I can't remember why I thought that and it doesn't seem to be in my notes. Um, although now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure one of the reasons I thought that they must have been in cahoots was because one of Carmelina's secret passages goes to Witness's balcony. Um, which is why I didn't, it didn't occur to me until very recently that Yuri might be involved with the tunnels. I assumed that Witness was running through the tunnels as well, doing, doing tunnel things. So if that's the case, then I suppose it's entirely possible that Henry Division is only part of Carmelina's plan. Or possibly they hatched a plan together and they had dis disagreements about the way they should carry it out. Witness's demon bomb, Carmelina's murder baby. Um, but Carmelina had to have started having her murder baby in a box before Henry became demon possessed. So it seems likely that Dem his possession was not a lucky accident that they that they set upon for their plans, but was in fact a part of this plan all along. So yeah, that makes it makes sense that if they've been planning this for a very long time and they are immortals, they have fuck all else to do. Um, it would make sense that Henry Division was 
suborned by a demon for their purposes to make him a very good patsy as the fall guy years later. Which also explains why he wasn't allowed to just be executed. So I have a sneaking suspicion that possibly if there is a singular mastermind, it might be Yuri. Yuri might have planned all of this and masterminded all of this and got Witness and Carmelina involved in their two separate plots following the whole Henry, Div Henry Division fiasco. Um, I mean, you know, he's tied to a lot of it. And also, uh, I forgot to mention this previously. In fact, I think I said I would come back to this and then didn't. And now we're coming back to it much later when it's less relevant. But we did find his hat petals at the scene of the crime, as in actually in the council chamber, which would imply to me that um, those got there either due to Dainonigate bringing them with him, which means that Yuri was likely someone who went through the tunnels with Dainonigate. We did find the petals also at the, at the second holy seal, which is where one of the, one of the tunnels lets out. Uh, Dainonigate's tunnel was created after the murders. We know that because it was created by him, not by Carmelina, because it's clumsy and ugly and was made in a hurry by someone trying to escape. So it seems likely that Carmelina, uh, sorry, that Yuri has been has been doing tunnel stuff, which means he must be heavily involved with Carmelina, like up to his tits in conspiracy, because the, she 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 has a secret magic tunnel that nobody else can use, apart from a handful of people that she gives a magic key to. So. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I think I'm relatively, relatively clear in my, in, in my thoughts here. Carmelina and Witness each created a plan to kill the council. Both of these plans went off at the same time, and both of them might have been instigated ultimately by Yuri Knight, or possibly Yuri is Carmelina's agent, Lydia and Sam are Witness's agents. Doom Jazz is very peripherally connected. Crimson Acid is very peripherally connected. They both seem to have been useful idiots who were, were used to transgress one specific thing. Which would make sense for a metagaming reason, uh, which is that these two are the love interests in the game. Uh, if you want to, you can date either of these two. They're the only ones. And I think, I think that the writers would simply want the love interests not to turn out to be culpable for the terrible things that have happened. Every single other person here is either a ghost, being framed, or directly culpable. So yeah, that's that's my that's my logic, that's my plan, that's what I'm going to be going into the courtroom with. It's Carmelina and Witness what done it, uh, working with Yuri and the Daybreaks, and uh, taking advantage of um, Aikiko, who has definitely done some bad stuff, but is more peripherally involved and uh, possibly peripherally involving Doom Jazz and Crimson Acid. Uh, Henry Henry did nothing wrong. Henry is a fall guy. One Last Kiss was also murdered by Carmelina. Yeah, so. Yeah. 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 The Tic Tac, the tic -tac was done by Carmelina and Witness through through the medium of a demon and a Danai... 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 So, yeah. Um... Which, and then, yeah, Henry's escape is down to Aikiko, Henry's possession is down to Yuri, Kayhax is missing because of Yuri, uh, the various seals were transgressed by the various people who transgressed them. Bris yeah, no, okay, I think, I, think we're all, I think we're good here. I think we're all set, and holy shit, that took a lot longer than I expected. Glances down at watch. Oh, geez, I am 15 hours late for court. Oh, I'm sure it's fine. I'll apologize to the judge. I'll tell them that their robe is looking very nice today. Um, I'll bring I'll bring them a an iced coffee with some wires in. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Anyway, so that's going to be it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. Join me again uh, for the second part of this two-parter, or possibly forty-eighth part of this forty-nine parter, depending on how you count it. In which we will actually go and do the fucking court session. Great. Thanks. This didn't go according to plan exactly. See you later. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. I also stream on Twitch, and I now have a Discord server for stream scheduling. You can contribute to my existence on Ko-fi or Patreon, and all of those links are in the video description. Thanks so much for watching.